Hi everyone, Harrison here, uh, doing another uh, one take shoe review in an attempt to be a little bit uh, more eloquent while I talk about shoes. Uh, I've shaved my head again for maximum airflow, for maximum efficiency. Uh, so I'm hoping I can cut down the, the overall time of this video and obviously the introductions are gonna be a little bit shorter. So uh, the brand that I'm going to be talking about today is TLB Mallorca, uh, the Artista line. Uh, and I want to talk about the Artista line basically because they're the only shoes from TLB Mallorca that I have. And I'm really excited to talk about uh, actually two pairs today because both of these pairs are custom, but the actual pattern that was uh, cut for both of these pairs are unique to the order that I placed with Tony over at TLB Mallorca. So I want to talk about these derbies first. Um, and when I say derby, a lot of people might look at this and they'll go, oh, it's an Oxford. Uh, this is not an Oxford. This is a derby. And you can tell it's a derby by looking at the way that the, um, the back of the shoe, right, the heel, uh, the way that it's cut towards the front of the shoe called the vamp over here. It's an open lacing channel. Any open lacing channel here, meaning that you're not tying your shoes where the lacing channel over here is sewn under the vamp, it's sewn over the vamp. Um, I could get an Oxford to show you, but uh, there are so many examples of Oxfords versus Derbies versus Bluchers online that it would be redundant, but this is a Derby. Um, these are a custom Derby on the Artista line in Burgundy Suede on the Picasso last in a size 11 and a half. So I wear a 12 and a half D. I have a pretty medium width foot. It, it's a little bit narrow, but generally I fit very comfortably into a D. Um, so you size down one if you live in the United States for anything in UK sizing. So I wore a 12 and a half. These are an 11 and a half UK. Um, they came with lasted shoe trees. So for anybody who don't know or doesn't know, a last is anything, is a mold that a shoe is made on. So when an upper is cut, it's molded and formed over what's called a last. A lasted shoe tree is a tree that's cut. Uh, this is in cedar wood. Generally, they're in beech wood. Um, and this is kind of finished and it's glazed a little bit. Um, but a lasted shoe tree is a shoe tree that's cut in the same shape that the shoe is molded on. So when you're done wearing your shoe and you insert the shoe tree, almost everything is, is, is full, basically. There's no... There's no wiggle room, everything is full, so the, the shape of the shoe can be maintained. Um, so these are about a week old now, I've worn them twice. Uh, and I just wanted to, to talk about the shoe, some of the really interesting stuff that Tony worked with me on when I was designing this with him, um, and then talk about some of the really awesome things uh, that kind of justify um, a relatively high price for people unfamiliar with, with quality footwear. But in the world of quality footwear, um, you know, these cost me $500 which, uh, you know, for, for these details and for the level of detail and attention that you're getting, I wouldn't be surprised if there were other companies like St. Crispin's or, or something like that that were charging over a thousand, um, right? The level of att the, the attention to detail, the quality of the upper is, is, is phenomenal, right? That it's suede, so it probably wouldn't be as expensive. But if you were to get this in calfskin, for example, I could certainly see it being very expensive. Um, so starting at the front of the shoe, um, this is a cap toe derby. Um, generally this comes with a plain toe. So like this boot over here, a plain toe, meaning that there's no, there are no perforations. There's nothing on the front of the toe. It's just plain. Uh, there's no extra, there's no cap that's sewn on. It's just a plain old toe. So this is a cap toe derby. But one of the things that I wanted to specify when working with Tony was I asked for, I called it a short wing. There are so many different names that I've seen for this. Uh, but for lack of a better word, I'm going to call this, it's a V cap cap toe derby, I guess. Uh, the V cap meaning there's a little bit of a wing tip over here, but it doesn't extend all the way along the vamp. So looking at it from a distance, you might say, oh, it's just a normal cap toe, but looking, there's a little bit of a, a little, a little wing tip over there. So um, a little thing that I thought would really, really just be an, an, a smart little adjustment that I'm really excited about. Um, when working with Tony, I sent him some pictures and, and I mean, the, I love these shoes. I absolutely love them. Um, I really don't like derbies. I find them to be a little bit bulbous sometimes. Um, looking at a lot of derbies, I associate them with dress shoes that people buy to go to the office because they have to, and they're always in black, and they're never maintained properly, so they get really, really unattractive creases, and the leather warps. 
um, and, and, and it turns into something that just is, is really ugly on the foot, but just unpleasant to look at uh, for somebody like me, obviously, but most people don't care. Um, not to say that I go around looking at people's shoes, but I certainly have been a little bit more, especially since COVID started. And I think mostly it's just because I can find someone who's wearing a really awesome pair of shoes and I can, you know, they'll look at me, I'll look at them and it's like a, oh, you know, I know, but you know, and, and it's, it's, it's one of those situations and it's, it's really, it's really kind of fun. Um, <laughs> so this is a, a three eyelet derby. Uh, the number of punches to allow for laces to to be set through and to be tied is there are three there are three eyelets so it's a three eyelet derby. Um, the upper is in burgundy suede, so it's a really nappy suede which I like and you know it's it it adds to a really dynamic look if you if you wear it throughout the day the nap might might flow in different directions and it really leads to a really dynamic looking shoe um, and it's something that I love. The heel cup over here has a little bit of padding, and the lining of the shoe is in uh, red. I think this is kid leather. I'm not 100% sure, but it is, it's, it's a red leather lining. So the shoe is fully lined. Um, now, when talking about fine details on a pair of shoes like this, one of the things that you can look at when you're investigating a pair of shoes um, along the welt here, so this pair is good, you're welted, is the density of the stitches. And on a pair of, say, Allen Edmonds, you might see four or five stitches per inch. Um, on a pair like this, I'm counting between eight and 10 stitches per inch. And functionally, there really isn't a huge difference. Um, the, the stitches serve really the same purpose, but the density of the stitches lead to a much tighter looking, a much cleaner looking shoe. So on a pair of, say, Allen Edmonds, you might see wider, um, ranges between each stitch along the welt. On this pair, along with the fudging along the welt here, and fudging is when you take a little wheel that has uh, like indentations on it, and you just run it right along the welt to add this little little design here. Um, it's, it's almost impossible to see the stitches unless you shine a light on them. But when you look at how dense the stitches are along the welt, it's a really, really clean shoe to look at all over. Um, the stitches along the upper, the stitches along the welt, on the sole, um, this is another thing that I wanna talk about, but this is a JR sole, Johann Rendenbach. So this is an oak bark tanned leather sole. It's really, really sturdy. Um, if you want a leather sole that will make you feel indestructible, you get a JR sole. Um, if you wanna feel a little bit more indestructible in a pair of, of dress shoes like this, I actually asked Tony if he could do a double midsole for me. So uh, here you have the welt, and this is a 270 degree welt. So what happens when you're constructing a shoe, for those of you who don't know, you take a functional piece of leather that is sewn to a piece of fabric generally that's attached to the insole. So the insole is attached to the upper. Attached to the insole is a piece of canvas generally called gemming. And then the welt is, is sewn to that gemming. So the welt runs along the upper over here. And then when it's time for the sole to be attached, they glue the sole on, but then for extra support and then for recraftability, the sole is then stitched to the welt. So one thing that they do at Tiao B. Marigo, which I love, is they do what's called a blind stitch, which is when they take a thin sheet of this leather over here and they fold it up, they do the stitching along the welt and then they close it back up, which leads to a really, really clean, a really beautiful sole to look at. Um, one of the other things that they do at TLB Mallorca, which I just absolutely love, I think it's a gorgeous touch, is what's called a fiddle back waist over here. And it's when you add a little bit of elevated leather uh, in the sole, or you add leather to elevate the sole and give it a really narrow, but a really beautiful dynamic looking shape here. So if you're crossing your legs or if somebody sees the bottom of your shoe, it's just a little attention to detail that adds so much character to the shoe. And if you look at how clean the heel stack is attached to the sole, it's, it's, it's a beautiful shoe. And for the price, it's, it's unmatched. It really truly is unmatched. I own a lot of other shoes in this price tag. Um, I own RM Williams, I own Cobbler Union, I own Carmina, I own a lot of shoes within this price point, and I found that TLB Mallorca is really hard to beat. The Carlos Santos hand grade line is close, I believe, but um, I've only seen one of their shoes. I own two TLB Mallorcas, so I really can't say much there, but compared to other brands that I do own, like the ones I mentioned earlier, the shoes here are just almost unbeatable. You have like J Fitzpatrick is another example, but those are sometimes a little bit pricier. And I own two pairs of J Fitzpatrick shoes. And, and again, they're, they're stunning, they're beautiful. But um, here we're talking about these TLB Mallorcas. So we spoke about the inside, the upper, the soles. 
it's a full leather heel stack, the JR half heel block over here. Um, one thing that I do want to talk about as well before I forget is the last. Uh, so this is the Picasso last on the Artista line, and the Picasso last is a square toed almost, it's a chisel toe. I, I hesitate to say a square toe because square toes are kind of those, those bulbous, mass produced kind of garbage looking shoes that I don't really love. Uh, but this is, is more of a chisel. I'd say it's a soft chisel. It's not very hard. I could get another example, but there are some shoes where the chisel is really, really defined. And you actually see it a little bit more on this pair of uh, boots. It's, a, it's the 140 boot on the Artista line with no cap toe on the Picasso last as well. And you can see that the shape of the chisel here, it's relatively hard, but it is softer than some other chisels that I've seen in the past. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's really, there's, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that I really love about these boots is that all of the things that there are to talk about, they're always, they're the little things. Um, they're the little tiny attentions to detail that really make these shoes beautiful. I'm sorry, oh, Moose is barking at a deer. Oh, there's a deer outside. Oh my God. All right, so I'll try to keep this short before he goes cuckoo bonkers. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, look, the, the shoes are amazing. Um, they're really amazing. If you see a pattern that you like, but you have any questions, uh, Tony is an amazing resource. Just email him and I, you know, I know he'd be happy to help. Oh, there he goes. He's really on. <laughs> so Moose, Moose does this thing where if he's looking outside, if he sees like an animal that's facing like east and then our bedroom window is facing north. But if he sees an animal to the east, he will run to the bedroom window and start barking out of the window facing 90 degrees away. And it's very funny. <laughs> Oh, he's back. He is unhappy about that deer being here. But anyway, um, TLB Mallorca Artista shoes are stunning. Absolutely amazing. Moose, come here. I will be right back. No, 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 no. No, Mr. Man. You can't just run away. Like, you big stinky boy. Look at him. Oh, what do you think about these shoes? Do you like them? <laughs> when, when, when Moose was a puppy, he walked into my closet and he started sniffing my shoes. And I looked at him and I was like, rrr, 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 rrr. and he has not touched my shoes since, which is great because I am terrified of him biting my shoes. Uh, but anyway, TLB Mallorca, amazing. I probably missed some stuff. I should probably write this down the next time I do this, but I did want to talk about these shoes because I love the both of them a ton. They're stunning shoes, they're amazing, they're worth the price, and more. They make me feel really good. I love wearing them. I love wearing them with suits. I love wearing them with jeans and chinos and, and all sorts of different outfits. They're really versatile. Uh, the shape is fantastic. The fit is fantastic. The quality of the uppers is great. Stunning for the price. Uh, Tony, if you're watching this, you get two thumbs up. I'd put three thumbs up if I had an extra thumb. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope this was entertaining. So, yeah.